This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Alyssa Orange joining us now on Halftime from Pig Troll Nation, fresh off of a birthday. Good afternoon, Alyssa. You still have the glow of the birthday. Do you do the week before and the week after, a whole month, or just the one day? Uh, maybe like a few days before or after, depending. Uh, went to you know went to Kansas City this weekend for a concert, which was really my birthday gift to myself. So were you too at the Billy Joel Stevie Nicks concert? Chuck Barrett told I, us he was at that show too this la uh, earlier in the show. He did, and I saw Chuck, and it was a very funny story how I saw Chuck. If you want to hear, it. was he getting down? Uh, yeah. Uh, at yeah. The yeah. Come on, um, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so the we, we he was down on the field. We were in the first row of a stadium section, and it was really cool because we were there. We didn't have anyone standing in front of us, and then it was the field. And we actually had the field bar in front of us. So I like looked at one of the bartenders. I was like, "Can you serve me?" They're like, "Sure." I was like, "This is great. I don't have to get up. Can I have you know two seltzers or whatever?" So there was a guy standing beside us, and he wanted to go down to the margarita stand. And the ladies guarding the entrance to the field wouldn't let him. And he was just getting so upset. So he was like, well, I'm going to go to the other side. And we're like, okay. So we watch him. It's like this whole thing. So he, like, gets down there, and he's, like, you know, giving the high fives in the air because he made it down onto the field level. And so we're following him, and he gets in the line for the margarita stand, and he's waving at us. We're just laughing at him. He's got two of his friends beside us, and we're just laughing. And... I'm sitting there, we're watching him order these margaritas to see if the woman who wouldn't allow him on the field is there. And then all of a sudden, this guy walks up behind him, and I was like, there's Chuck. It's Chuck. And I got up, and I run, and I was like, Chuck, Chuck. And that's the only reason why I was even looking at the margarita stand to begin with was because this guy was so determined to get there. And then all of a sudden, there's Chuck Barrett, and I got to say hello. So it was fun. Yeah, well, not bad, not bad. It's yeah. always nice to see, you know, familiar faces in a crowd of uh, 95,000 people that are screaming and yeah. singing songs. Did you go for Billy or did you go for, uh, or, or, or did you go for, uh, Stevie Nicks? Stevie Nicks. For Stevie Nicks. Yeah, uh, Billy Joel, uh, mm -hmm. born and raised a huge Billy Joel fan. So um, yeah. that was, it was, I think I said it was more than a concert. It was an experience. It was awesome. See, it's, it's American. If you don't like Billy Joe, it's like, I don't know what to say to you. Yeah. Did you hear that, B.E.? Uh, yeah, B.E. in Clarksville is oh. a resident Billy Joel hater. I celebrate his entire catalog. That's terrible. Yeah. He, uh, 74 years old and still incredible. Sounds incredible. Stevie, 75. Might have been one of the best concerts I've ever seen. It was it was great. Well, you, really. know, you, you, ju you just got older by a day yesterday, but there's another number on the end of it. Uh, and I was telling you on text message, and I've gotten I've gotten some requests here, uh, some, uh, some some answers from people. I, I think 40s are better than the 30s. At least for me, they have been for the first six and a half years of the 40s. Shannon and Clute says her 30s were better than her 40s. We've got plenty of others that say vice versa. So mm -hmm. um, you know, you'll get there, and you've got yep. uh, you got a lot to look forward to, Alyssa. But these next four and a half years can still be good too. Five years. Yeah. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for what's next. I'm excited for 40s. I will say I've enjoyed my 30s more than my 20s overall. Mm -hmm. I think, obviously, you have just so much fun in your 20s, but in your 30s, you have fun. You just do it a lot smarter with, a, with more money. Yes, and the kids keep getting older and older. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. We heard, let's see, let's get into this team a little bit. We heard from uh, defensive lineman Keevy Rose and Eric Gregory yesterday, Jaden Wilson as well. Um, seems Wilson, I mean, Wilson's going to be part of that rotation. I know he was hurt at the, um, uh, for, for most of spring ball, so we didn't get a chance to you know, see him in the spring game. Uh, but uh, you know, I know he's going to get an opportunity uh, to, uh, to play, and he's going to be amongst those six uh, that I think that Sam referred to this past weekend. And I don't know who we're going to hear from today, but whoever we're going to hear from, you know they're, they're planning on him being a pretty important part of the team. I don't think Jaden would have been out there in front of the cameras if that wasn't the case. Yeah, I think so. At this part of the, um, the, the preseason, with what I think we've got about 10 more days or so left before that first game, what we're hearing from guys that are going to play. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they craft this offense because I think that's the biggest question for me, obviously. There is no question with K.J. Jefferson and who he's got in the backfield. But 
when you look at who's going to play on the offensive line, and then, like you mentioned, Jaden Wilson, but then you look at the other wide receivers, um, who are they going to go with? And and they've gone with a little bit of a different combination. I think the one steady guy who's always run with the one is Andrew Armstrong. You also got um, Isaac Tesla out there as well with the one. But there's so many guys that they could go to and rotate through, including the tight end. I'm just really interested to see exactly how they craft up that first initial drive when they open up against Western Carolina in a week and a half and what that looks like and how many guys they will utilize week one um, from the wide receivers and the tight ends because I think that's going to tell you a lot on what exactly they want to try to do offensively this year. Yeah, Alyssa, do you, do you think this team's going to be fast enough? I mean, just overall, this team depth, that will have some speed? Because it, it seems like if we could just be a little bit faster, some of those 12-yard mm-hmm. runs, 20-yard run can be touchdowns. I think so. I think you're just going to get faster because of the guys that they've brought in. You know that Isaiah Satenia and I heard you guys talking with Houston Nutt before me about speed and, and those dual athlete guys. Well, Isaiah Satenia is a huge track guy. His mom ran for the Jamaican team, and his dad is a track coach. And um, if he can get a little more separation from the defender, he's gone. And and he's a guy who is super fast. We heard him take a 100-yard kickoff back to the house in the scrimmage on Saturday. Um, but their speed right there, you're going to get some more speed with Andrew Armstrong. And then I, I, I'm not sure about the secondary yet. It's going to be really interesting. I wish we could see a little bit more one-on-one with those guys. You know, the drills that they do – either really favor the offense or they really favor the defense so it doesn't seem like a fair fight when you watch those uh but but to be able to see exactly what they look like in the game scenario for the first time we're really going to tell whether that secondary's got some speed or not yeah and and um, do you don't you feel like they've got this all figured out by now i mean the coaches as far as how the the depth chart's going to lay out who the ones, who the twos, who the threes are by now? Uh, you know, and when when yeah. I hear when I hear Sam Pittman talking about camp is over, and Wednesday we start planning for Western Carolina. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so mm-hmm. I think he knows who he's sending out there as the number ones next Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and he also made a comment where it's like now that you know camp is really where you figure out who's going to play where and when. And then it's really hard to beat a guy out once camp is over because everything's pretty much set in stone and outside of an injury changing things up. They know exactly the guys that they want to go with. And so that's pretty much been laid out right now. And so um, nothing is going to change much between now and Western Carolina game. So they've got a good idea of of who they're going to play, what that offensive line is going to look like. Um, we'll just see exactly how much behind the curtain they're going to allow us to see before that first game. Yeah, and how, how this team reacts to adversity. You know, maybe they don't have any adversity in these first two games, but I bet you BYU, that the, the, they'll be ready. And, and the, I hope this team is a little bit different than last year's team, and I know they're all going to be different. But, you know, last year we struggled with SMS. Last year we, we got beat by Liberty at home. And I don't th- I don't see this team do, being that way this year. I think uh, Western Carolina and Kent State are both going to be dubs for this team. I think this seems a little bit more unified than last team's is. I think they just gel a little bit better than last team's that last year's team does. Um, but the slow starts, I think, are something that might be a little telling. They've talked about that in the scrimmages. KJ talked about it after the first scrimmage. And again, it was just the first scrimmage of the fall, so you can't read too much into it. But there was a little bit of a slow start, and that's something that they have tried to avoid and want to avoid heading into the year. So do we see a little bit of a slower start, which is exactly what we got with most of these games? And then when they did start off fast, it it, it died quickly. So can they get out to a fast start and not take a couple of series to get things going and then can they maintain that I think that's really going to be very telling to how successful the season's going to be last thing Alyssa we went into the month of August and your Dodgers had a two-game lead in the West <laughs> that lead has grown to 12 I think they've won 13 of their last 14 games and uh, yeah. just kind of continue to own the NL West. And I know you haven't felt great about the Dodgers, but, man, they're peaking right now. I just got to try to hold that for a while because August doesn't matter as much as October, yeah. and they're going to be there in October. 
Right. You know, I remember freaking out in April, and you were telling me that I was crazy. And you're right. I was crazy. What was I freaking out about? They were two and a half games behind the Diamondbacks, and I was being dramatic. Um, but this is kind of fun right now. They're, they're clicking right now. I think Dave Roberts has finally got some pieces in the right place, and things are kind of moving on. And I mean, I, I might read into this because of baseball and superstition, but you get Kike Hernandez back. You get him back from Boston. And he was such a big piece, not because of how he performed every game, but just the energy he brings. So my dad keeps calling this the Kike effect, and I'm buying into it. He just had that that energy and that swagger and that fun and that excitement specifically for the postseason. Him and John Peterson always brought it, and the Dodgers didn't have it last year. They didn't have any kind of spark in the postseason. And here comes Kike Hernandez back, and this team has turned things around. So I'm buying it until I'm not anymore. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.